Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. And I wanted to use the Celestron 11-inch telescope with the StarSense Auto Guider on uh, with a new setup that I haven't used for a while. That's called the uh, Star Arizona Hyperstar Setup. That takes this telescope, which has a focal length of 2,800 millimeters, all the way down to about 560 millimeters, or in other words, F10 down to F1.8. Incredibly large field of view should be established with this system set up. The question is, will it work? I got a new camera. It's the Topek Sky I24 full frame camera with a super large pixel size of almost six uh, microns, uh, 5.94. And so the setup is to let's take this telescope at F10 and reduce it to F1.8. So let's talk about the Star Arizona Hyperstar and the Celestron 11-inch HD. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. All right, let's first of all take a look at the Star Arizona Hyperstar. And this is it right here. And it has a uh, mounting ring on it. And inside that mounting ring, uh, there's a, a another adapter here from M48 to M42. And if you take that off, like so, you can add a filter to that. In this case, it's the Altair uh, quad band filter that I'm going to be using. It just screws right into here. Um, there you go. Screws right into there, and you put that back in there. Now, you might be able to get away with a filter drawer. Uh, I haven't tested it with the filter drawer, but it works well like this. So this is the actual Star Zona. Now, here's the camera. This is the Topek Sky I24. It has a huge uh, image uh, uh, size here, and it's a full frame camera with a pixel size of 5.94 microns. Huge pixel size. So uh, I'm wondering how the marriage of this camera with the Hyperstar on the Celestron 11 inch telescope will, uh, will perform. We'll take a look at that. Now, next thing I need to do is I have to get this little adapter ring here. Uh, to put on, to take it from an M42 back to M48, since my camera is M48, and uh, actually it's M50, M54. Here we go, put that on, and then I'll just attach the camera to the Hyperstar, like so. So this is the Hyperstar setup right here with camera. And this end here goes on the front of the telescope, not the back of the telescope, but the front of the telescope. And this little device here screws off. It's the cover, but it's more than just a cover. You shall see in just a second. When I take this off, there's the hyperlens right there, the hyperstar of the hyperlens. And this container here now is a uh, container, or the cap is a container now for this secondary mirror from the Celestron 11 inch, which I'm gonna take off and then store it in here for protection. And there's a little slot on here that helps guide the uh, secondary mirror into this uh, container. That same uh, slot will be also used on the telescope to make sure the secondary mirror goes exactly in the same way it was taken out. All right, so let's add this to the Celestron 11 inch Edge HD telescope. And the target for tonight is over there, above that tree, right over there, up in the southeastern and southern sky, is the Lagoon Nebula. It'll come into view around 11 o'clock tonight, and I should be able to get it with this setup. So let's take a look. All right, let's put the Starzona Hyperstar on the telescope. All right, the first thing I wanna do is take off the secondary mirror. And I unscrew this uh, holding cap here. It takes ter several turns. It sits securely on there. That comes off. Now I just simply lift the mirror out carefully. There's a little slot on the um, mirror itself. There's the mirror. And there's a little slot here uh, setting the two up so I can put it exactly in the way it came out. Now the next thing I want to do is take the cap from the Star Zona right here, and there is a slot on that again, and I'm just gonna line the two slots up together, and 
the, the um, secondary mirror fits in there very nicely. I take the retain, retaining cap and just screw it on here. So now the secondary mirror is safe and secure. So I can store that. Now, the hyperlens right now is the next device I need to put on. So finding the thread sometimes is funny and tricky. And sometimes it goes on fast and sometimes it doesn't want to go on at all. But let's try it. Just goes right in like so. Got to find the groove there somewhere. I'm better off this way. There it goes. Oh, there it is. I heard a click. All right, that's going to take several turns. Something else nice about this Star Arizona Hyperstar, I'll show you after I get this all screwed in. These bolts here, well, you can use these for aligning the, the uh, uh, collimating the mirror if it's out of collimation, but these other ones, uh, taller screws, help to unlock the system so you can turn the camera to any uh, angle you want. And what I want it to be is on an angle with the fins pointing up toward the center of the scope, right there, right about there. Then I can lock it in if I want. All right. Now the next thing we want to do is hook up the camera. And I need my power supply and my USB 3 connector. Let's connect that up right here. And we'll connect this one right over here in the power. And the two will come down together uh, with this uh, other two cables for the um, dew plate, dew heater plate, or the dew heater ring uh, that prevents dew from forming on the uh, lens. And this camera has a dew heater built into it as well to help the uh, sensor from dewing up when I chill it down to uh, the desirable temperature, which is somewhere around zero degrees Celsius or minus 10. Usually in this humidity, I take it down to minus five to, to plus zero. Uh, because it's just so humid out here in the savannah during the summer months. Anyway, now the ne I could run it like that, but I have a better solution. I have the Celestron hood. This is a very durable uh, cover. I just put it on over here, line up the cables. They have a little slot over here. Just slip that in like so. And it's out in the sun here, and it, boy, it's, that baby's hot. All right, and then I have a rubber band system here where I can snug it in there nice and tight. There we go. All right. Now, am I ready? Not quite, because I had the, the weight of the telescope was way in the back before. Now the weight of the telescope in the front. So I'm gonna to have to rebalance, particularly in the declination mode. So carefully hold on to the, I didn't do this the other night. I, I didn't carefully hold on to it and boy, it was very top heavy. So, but carefully hold on to your system and make sure you have it balanced. And I just balanced it. I pushed the, uh, the uh, telescope back. Uh, this was all the way up to about here before I put the Hyperstar on. Now I pushed it back. And as you can see, it's, it's close to balance. Before, <laughs> before I did that, it just went whop. Ugh. Fortunately, nothing got damaged. So but anyway, there it is right there. So once it's balanced, you can lock it in. And then since this is the CGX mount, uh, I let the mount take care of itself. It has its own uh, device where it can it spot its switches. Uh, so it knows exactly how to point to the North Celestial Pole when I, tr when I start setting it up through the CPWI. All right, so this is ready to go. This is the StarSense Auto Guider. Now, another thing about the Hyperstar, if you're using an off-axis guider, you can't use an off-axis guider with the uh, Hyperstar. But I'm not using the off-axis guider. I'm using the StarSense Auto Guider, and it's working like a champ. So let's take a look at M8, the Lagoon Nebula, and see how it's going to look through this system here, uh, through the uh, uh, NINA, the setting up through NINA, and then let's take a look at some of the actual images, and then the final image. Uh, to tell you the truth, I was blown away. All right, let's take a look. 
All right, let's take a look at the view from Nina. This is the setup in the uh, 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 framing device on Nina. There you can see a super wide field of view. I mean, this is amazing with the Topek uh, Sky I-24, that large pixel size and the Hyperstar uh, on the Celestron 11 inch, taking it from a 2800 millimeter uh, system down to 526 millimeters or a focal ratio from f10 to f1.8 amazing field of view i'm going to be using here i'm using the advanced sequencer and i'm going to unpark the scope cool the camera set the dew heater on start robocopy that will take all my files which are huge by the way with this camera uh, and send it over into my network uh, and, and then store it there and there's the L lagoon nebula and uh, it, it's just coming up into view now. This is uh, the night uh, is coming into view. And uh, I have the um, sequence yeah, taking a peek at every 30 frames since I'm taking 60 second frames or every 30 minutes in this case to make sure that the center of the view has not drifted off the target. And if it does, Nina will put it right back on. That's a nice thing about the advanced sequencer. Taking a look at the auto guiding. Now, the auto guiding is off a little bit because this was before I balanced the scope. I forgot to balance the scope, and I told you about that earlier. Well, since I balanced the scope, the, the tracking and the guiding went much, much better. Anyway, uh, that's not a fault of StarSense Auto Guider. That's a fault of Pat Prokop not balancing the scope. All right, let's go through the autofocus real quickly, and uh, um, I'll speed this up for you. All right, the autofocus is done. There is the first image that came in. Look at that beautiful image. I'm using the Altair uh, quad band filter on this, uh, on the Hyperstar. And I'm just blown away by the image uh, coming in right now. So that's the first of many. All right, let's go into PixInsight. And first of all, I did stack this in Deep Sky Stacker. And it took about five minutes. I had about 124 frames and uh, uh, so what, two hours and eight or two hours and four minutes or so. Uh, I also tried the weighted batch pre-processing <laughs> picks in sight. And uh, I had 126 frames actually. And it took uh, not five minutes, not 10 minutes. It took five hours and five minutes to stack using the weighted batch pre-processing uh, system in, in PixInsight. So, you know, that didn't work out well at all. Anyway, uh, let's take a look, first of all, at the uh, stacked image, raw stacked image. There it is right there. That's a beautiful image just, just in itself, um, showing the wide field of view. In contrast to that, I can show you the um, uh, view from the Eon telescope, uh, the 130 millimeter uh, F7 telescope. I, I was uh, shooting it at the same time uh, with that scope, and there you can see it's a much tighter field of view. But so let's go back to the Starzona hyperspace uh, reducer lens, and looking in the, at this. And let's look at the final process after I passed it through several features into PixInsight. That's uh, uh, the blur exterminator, star exterminator, noise exterminator, uh, uh, gradient corrections, and so forth. There you have it right there. And oh my gosh, it's. Uh, it's just gorgeous. It's just a gorgeous picture right there. Uh, also, uh, after this went behind the trees, I did program the uh, computer and the um, rig to capture the Andromeda galaxy. And the camera was in the wrong position, but there is the view of the Andromeda galaxy. I never got this at all uh, with the, um, even with the uh, Eon telescope, uh, you don't get this wide field of view. Uh, let's uh, rotate this and uh, uh, there's the Lagoon Nebula again, but let's rotate the uh, Andromeda. There it is right there. Uh, again, this is just a test image. It's only about 45 minutes worth of data on this. And I was just seeing if I can get the whole galaxy in the uh, frame, uh, frame view, and it did. It worked out very well. So I'm going to work more on the Andromeda galaxies. Other uh, uh, systems I'm going to be looking at as well, the North American Nebula, the... Uh, uh, the Cocoon Nebula is one of my favorites. I want to get a nice wide field view of that because uh, it shows these really nice dark veins of dark shadows, uh, dark matter, and so forth uh, 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 viewable. So let's go back outside. One of the main reasons I bought this telescope was for the planets, and the planets are becoming visible now 
uh, high up in the eastern and southeastern sky early in the morning, late, late at night, right around midnight or so. And they're coming up about four minutes earlier each night, except Mars, it, it rises about two minutes earlier each night for the time being, anyway. Uh, but uh, at F10, uh, uh, I get some great views of the planets, and with a Barlow lens on there, a 2X Barlow or extender, I can take this up to F20, the equivalent of X F20 uh, on the planets. And, 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 and also planetary cameras with a small pixel size. You know, the pixel size in this camera at the moment, uh, the Topek Sky I-24 is 5.94, just say six microns. Uh, planetary cameras, you want them below three if you can get those. Uh, I have a couple of cameras at one point, or I have a couple of cameras at 2.9 microns. Uh, so they're excellent for planetary observation. So the other uh, avenue is using the 0 0.07 reducer that attaches to the back of the telescope. And from there, I get some great views as well, a little bit wider field of view, but with the Hyperstar at f1.8, I don't have a small view, I don't have a medium sized view, I have a large view. And look at that picture at the end of the uh, video, I'm going to show you that picture again. If you would like to support my channel, please feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and to leave any comments if you have comments available. And you can also join my channel or join my Patreon page. That also helps me keep this system up and running. Uh, you may already know if you haven't already, but astrophotography is not a cheap hobby, but it is so much fun and so rewarding. As we look around the sky, it's just filled with majestic wonders in the universe, and they're all in a sky near you, in your own backyard. You don't have to wait for the Webb telescope and the Hubble telescope and the Spitzer telescope. You can get it all in your backyard, your own satisfaction, looking at it with your own eyes, your own camera, and your own processing skills. So, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.